Okay, you've all probably heard of container images. They're the lingua franca of software development these days. At Stripe, we run tens of thousands of services on bare metal Kubernetes using these container images. You might know them from Lambda, Kubernetes Engine, or Docker Swarm. So getting these container images built is pretty critical for everyone uh, to be able to run all these services. But who really knows what a container image is under the hood? So let's dig in a little bit there and start there. A container image is really just a JSON object. So let's take a closer look at the Postgres image using this regcuddle utility. Regcuddle is just a small Go binary for easily interacting with container registries like Docker Hub or AWS ECR. And container registries hold the, they host the container images and systems that interact with uh, container images like Docker or Kubernetes go and talk to a container registry to actually download an image when they want to run a service. So we've got our regcuddle utility. We told it to give us our JSON. Here's the JSON. Each image is made out of multiple uh, layers. And there's our layers key in the JSON. And uh, each layer of the image is actually just a tarball. You can see the media type there. And uh, in this case, they're actually compressed with gzip for the Postgres image. So let's take a peek at this first layer. Let's check some here. So first, we can just download it. Again, regcuddle helps us out. And we'll untar it. We'll list the stuff in there. So you'll notice pretty familiar set of directories, Etsy, home, good stuff like that. So since the, this Postgres image is built on top of Debian, it just looks like a standard Linux root directory inside this tarball. So it turns out the ninth layer, actually, in this case, is the, uh, the Postgres binary. So there's a bunch of other layers in those 14 that contain system packages, configuration, all sorts of stuff like that. So when Postgres is actually executed from these container images, what does that look like? The container runtime smashes all these layers together. And it puts this alternate reality called a, the merge directory in the screen. Uh, and that's where Postgres actually runs. On Linux, this is powered by the overlay FS file system. So this particular bit isn't super relevant for you know, building these images, but it wraps up our container image 101 recap. So container image and Bazel. At Stripe, we really want to build everything with Bazel. Uh, we want to benefit from remote caching, remote execution, deduplication, all that good stuff. So we want to do that for container builds too, not just tests. So fortunately, there's a helpful rule set out there we've used for a while called Rule Stalker. Here's a toy example. We build a container image, and it has one layer in it, has a couple Python files in it. It's all pretty simple. Call it app image. So Docker, Rules Docker will even help you out with actually pushing your image to a container registry like Docker Hub. They have this container push rule, and it will produce an executable target. You can Bazel run it, and it will upload our app image, in this case, to index.docker.io. This, this target crucially requires all the, action, all the layers to be downloaded to disk before it can actually run and start pushing them up to the container registry. So as it turns out, we started pushing the limits of these primitives we talked about a couple years ago. In our Java mono repo, we now build our container, 1,500 container images per push. It's 1,550 last I checked, I think. In total, that's 1.7 terabytes of data every single build. Uh, imagine pulling 1.7 terabytes of data every build and pushing it back up. You would be very unhappy. So like most problems in life, we go to and look at our Bazel flags, and that, that's a solution. So the remote download minimal flag is one that helps us out here. Uh, it results in Bazel building everything, but not actually downloading the outputs. So now we have a way to make our Bazel build sustainable. We pass this flag. Everything's great. But we still need a way for us to get those image layers into the container registry. They're not just useful if they're sitting in the Bazel cache. So that's where the, the build event service, the best, I'll abbreviate it, comes in here. Our best backend can listen for these targeted completed events that the Bazel server sends out. And it uses that to find container image builds. That it can download the bits of those container image builds, those layers, from the Bazel cache, and then upload them to the container registry. So let's dive a little bit into these details. Our best backend is specifically looking for Bazel actions that output what we call image descriptors. So each image descriptor, like we like JSON, so here's some more JSON. It's a little JSON blob. It has the output path of each individual image layer and a little metadata about each one, too. So our best backend can always download these little image descriptors, one per image. Then it quickly can construct the container image manifest, the JSON that we saw earlier that we pulled with regcuddle using the data here. 
So the build event service is also really helpful. It passes us the information necessary for each of these outputs to actually go and download that blob. This is how that JSON looks for this particular uh, layer zero. Has a URI in there, we can use that URI. So now we've got all the pieces for need. For each layer, we check the container registry whether the layer's already been down, up, uploaded. If it's new, we download the blob from the Bazel cache and we upload it to the container registry. Since we have all those checksums and those little JSON files we talked about, we don't need to download it unless we're actually about to upload it to the container registry. So fortunately for us, uh, container images are constructed in a very helpful way. They have large base layers that don't really change really often. So uh, like that Debian layer we saw earlier. So that means we can avoid downloading 95% of bytes on most of these builds or more. So here we have image one and image one prime. Layers A and B haven't really changed between both builds. So there's even more savings. Uh, it comes from multiple container images they can share layers. So if you've extracted your third party depths into a shared layer, you can have that shared across a bunch of different services that have the same set of third party depths. So here we have image one, two, and three, all sharing their first A and B layers. So in that case, we can only download the layer once for every build, even if it ends up being pushed to multiple different image repositories. So we can build on that optimization a little bit. We can deduplicate downloads even across multiple images. And so this one was actually really impactful for us. You can see here we went from downloading over 12 terabytes of duplicate data each build to so little that you can't even see it. Uh, each, each color there is a different build pipeline. And we got one last trick. If multiple images are being pushed to the same repository and share an, an identical layer, we can deduplicate the upload in flight as well even fewer bytes. So all in all, we massively reduce the bytes uploaded and downloaded. So this graph shows you how, uh, how much build worker hours we spent on container image builds. Each uh, color is a separate pipeline. Aside from the large reduction in build worker spend, we also dramatically reduced the number of pipelines here, or the number of colors, and we did a bunch of operational hover ed in like, manually sharding these to keep them, keep them within timeouts, et cetera. This graph is from early 2023. We only had some of the optimizations we have now. Uh, back then, so it would be even better. So switching gears a little bit, the image pushing flow isn't the only place that we've optimized when it comes to container images. Unfortunately, rules docker is not maintained in the open source community, it's archived, uh, so we maintain a stripped down version of it dr uh, internally, dramatically stripped down. Our version applies some pretty tactical but, but impactful optimizations to its action graph. So first, uh, rather than having a separate action create the layer, then have a separate action compress it, and have two more actions on top of those to check some both of these. We need all of those. We have a single action that actually generates all four of those outputs. And that avoids the overhead of passing these layers across different remote workers. And a single layer can be, I don't know, five gigs large, which can be pretty expensive to pass between multiple workers just to get, just to get it checksummed. So since the tar and gzip formats that we're talking about here are actually pretty streamable and they're built that way, we can even cut out all the file I.O., right? So we can have a single action actually just avoid rereading the layers from disk even. So we've swapped out our, uh, our rules docker for a more streamlined version that simultaneously writes all four of these input, uh, outputs. So there's still individually declared outputs in the, in the action, so our best can just fetch the ones it needs when it's actually uploading stuff. So our second optimization avoids serial actions when building the image config. It's another little piece of JSON metadata that the container registry wants. So rather than having one action per layer kind of waterfall into the next one, we have a single action that runs that process on uh, once per layer. At the end of the day, image config 14 here, which is the last image config, is the only one that even gets used when you're uploading the, the image. So these, uh, these actions, interestingly, don't actually include the layers as inputs. They're just a little, they're just a bunch of metadata, basically. And so we're mostly cutting out the overhead of scheduling actions and, and cutting down that critical path. For, for our container images that have like 50 layers or something, this can still add up pretty quickly, even if it's just small actions. Okay, so that's all I've got for today. Uh, but we've got plenty more exciting ideas like reading container images directly from the Bazel cast and not even bothering uploading them to a container registry. So I hope you learned something new. 
and uh, come talk to me about container images. Thank you.